Hello everybody, it's Thumper with Financial Options. And first thing I want to do is say thank you guys for your support. Uh, this channel is only a month old and we're up to 179 subscribers. And that's because of you guys, the community. Like you guys are sharing this and finding value and I can't tell you how motivating it is to see that subscriber count grow and know that people are finding value in these videos. If that wasn't the case, I probably wouldn't be doing it. So thank you guys. If you're not subscribed and you do like this content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This week, I mean, was a pretty easy week for me. A lot of movement in my positions, but in terms of managing them, there wasn't really much to do. On Monday, we saw the VIX drop to, I think, 17, maybe maybe even hit the 16 levels. And a lot of my short positions had a lot of premium come off. So I did log in for like five minutes and close a bunch of positions, take that risk off the table. I wasn't quite sure if the market would go up or down from that point, so I decided just to close those, take that one, and go away. Uh, Tuesday, because I took away those positions as VIX continued to drop and premium got sucked out of contracts, and I'm left with my long positions at, at this point, I had a daily loss. But on Wednesday, some of my problem children decided to start coming back up, and Thursday, some of my problem children became my favorite children, and I was able to close some stuff there and you know, leave me with Friday and Friday I mean that might as well be a flat day for me so let's jump into the project report I was actually quite shocked to see that I'm at all-time highs again so 176 almost 177 couldn't give me those two bucks could you <laughs> uh, I would have been fine with like a negative two percent return on this month but instead we came out ahead and so that's pretty cool I realized premium, I closed some leap positions, and that really jacked up the premium I received for May. At one point, I think I was at negative 2300 for realized premium for May. Uh, this week's trades, like I said, on Monday, these are pretty straightforward. Premium got sucked out. I mean, here we had a strangle that I was going to close both sides. I think I put this on last week even, so I was able to get out with about 200 bucks of profit. Just because premium went down on Monday, and I just decided to close everything. Uh, for the trades on Monday, this ARC 106 put, this was a rolled position. So this was actually a, a net loss, I think, of like 200 with that rolled position. But I wasn't too confident that ARC is going to stay up, and just decided to take what I had here now instead of gambling with it. Well, Tuesday, I did nothing. Wednesday, I sold uh, some cover calls against a leap position on Virgin Galactic. It, Virgin Galactic went up quite a bit. I think it went up to 27. So I wanted to make sure I caught some of that profit in case it chose to bleed off on Thursday and Friday. So if it did go down, I would have collected a nice 3250 bucks and call it a day in July. But instead, on Thursday, Virgin Galactic continued to go up. It got to the point where it was like, I just want to close this out. I'm going to take a loss on those shorts I put put on the day before. But overall, my leaps gave me a pretty nice profit. That's almost more than I paid for my last car. Like, it'd be dumb not to take that, right? <laughs> and then here we have Snow. A, a ticker that I always seem to get paid a commission for dealing in. That's always interesting. Then I was able to close out on Thursday as well for a nice little gain. And I guess these are my problem children for a while, and it's nice. It's like they just went off to college. See you, bye. Thanks for nice knowing you. And then on Friday, I have a lot of buying power available, and this trade looked good, so I put this on, even though it's a small premium compared to, like, what the actual cash to secure it would be. It seems like a pretty safe play to just collect, a, you know, collect some lunch money right there. Overall, on this week alone, if you add all this up, you know, 8,100 realized for the week. It's pretty big numbers, even for me. Uh, position I wanted to go over a little bit was Snow. So this is using the old Poor Man Cover Call Tracker before they got the updated version that you can get by clicking that link up above. And this position, I started by buying two leaps at strike price of 155. I think I paid 115.40 for them. So 115.4. And later I ended up buying two more contracts to make it four contracts deep. And you can see I started off like the 
point of this trade was just to hold the lead and make money off the lead. The stock never seemed to want to go do what I wanted it to do. And in April, I decided to start tournament of poor man cover calls, which I love doing to try to, you know, attack that trade. And you could tell in the two months that I was selling cover calls against it, I almost made as much money as I did on the four leaps themselves over the course of four months. So it just shows you the power of the uh, poor man's covered call. And that's a video I'm hoping to drop tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, last week, I said one of my goals going forward were to get more neutral, <laughs> delta neutral. And you can see I did that, but I also closed a lot of positions. So that's why I'm pretty neutral right now as well. You can see theta is really low. All right, so for the first time, I think I'm going to show my current positions. I'm trying to be very transparent about what I'm doing. I do still have a couple of stocks that are very meme -y that I would not recommend to anyone, such as Wish. Palatier is also kind of a meme, but I like it myself. And I do have a couple of long positions here. MFA, I bought a thousand shares at 111 when it was dipped back in, like I think it was March or April of last year. And that position is dripping, so I'm averaging up every time a dividend comes in. Uh, Nusi, you know, an income stock, or sorry, an income ETF. If you want to learn more about that, GW ETF channel, he goes deep into Nusi and all the in income funds. Palatier, I've been selling cover calls against this. I've been running the, running the wheel on it. I think I'm on my third iteration of covered calls. And here's the covered call against it. It's also negative, but to me, this number means nothing because if it does finish above 24 on expiration, my shares will just get called away. So in this position, I know I'm going to make 430 bucks because I'm letting it go if it gets there. I'm not trying to defend this at all. So I hope it gets called away. If it doesn't, then I'll just sell more cover calls against it. Uh, let's see here. AT&T, I still have a couple of shares that dripped. When I was running the wheel on T, wish this has become a long time, long term hold, <laughs> I think, which is fine. I knew going in that I could end up back holding this for a while. Eventually, I think wish will be up. I'll just be holding this for quite a bit. And to make it a little worse, I was getting greedy and sold some puts on it and even double down on that position. So I'll be owning a lot of wish eventually. I rolled this out once, I may take assignment next time. Uh, these positions, pretty self-explanatory. Microsoft Strangle, they're all in the profit right now. <clears throat> now. The only other one here is, I guess, TQQ's a pretty long-dated contract. And then Rocket is a leap that I'm just holding on to and waiting for Rocket to go back up. All right, and then I logged in my brokerage and was surprised by the month-to-date graph, so... Let's put that up there, and it shows that I have a 5% return for the month. If you would have told me that would have been the case at the start of the month, I would not have believed you. I would have been fine with a negative 2% the way the month started off for me. So that was a pleasant surprise to see in the end. And then the year-to-date graph that they show, I'm up over 100%, or at least my count size is up 100, over 100%. And... I think I opened this up in July for Interactive Brokers, so it's not even 12 months yet. This only goes back 11 months. Now, I'll say, like, don't expect these type of returns. This has got to be a fluke, right? Uh, it's been a huge bull market. Volatility was high. It's basically the perfect environment for doing the strategies that I'm doing. So you just don't expect these returns. I would say expect 1% to 2% a month. If you get more than that, great. If not, it's okay too, but like aim for like one to two percent if you gotta set a goal like that. And with all that said, you know, join the Discord. I'll put the link in the video description again. We have a nice group of people that are all sharing their knowledge and just helping each other learn how to do options. I am not a financial advisor. Any information included in this video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for investment, tax, or legal advice.